talk to me a little more about coffee. And yeah. Because this is obviously you know, very, a very commonly consumed beverage. Yeah. Uh, one of the most commonly consumed beverages in the world. Uh, and you mentioned caffeine. I'm interested. I, I think from listening to you, you try and push back any caffeine consumption in the sort of, you try and avoid it, I should say, in the first sort of 60 to 90 minutes of the day. Can, yeah. you, can you kind of talk to the importance of that? Yeah. So uh, caffeine, and we could talk about coffee specifically, but caffeine generally, so whether or not it's from tea or from coffee or from, uh, I'm a big yerba mate fan. I think this, I think you got the, I think you got the black, you know, we're both drinking this. Um, this is not my podcast sponsor, but someone from Peak Tea sent us this, um, uh, what is it? It's like a pure, I like these fermented mm. teas, these pure rare teas. It reminds me of, yeah. of China. I've, I've yeah. had several chips. Very trips smooth, there. not tannic. I really yeah. like it. Again, not a sponsor, not promoting them, but the tea's really nice. Um, but it has caffeine. So what's caffeine doing? Caffeine is causing the liberation of adrenaline from your adrenals, these two little marble-sized glands above your kidneys. That tends to activate the so-called sympathetic nervous system, make you a little bit more prone to move, um, bring some alertness to your body, if you, uh, so to speak. And then you simultaneously, it's causing the release of norepinephrine and epinephrine from this little cluster of neurons called locus ceruleus that we talked about before. So the brain is being hosed with a little bit of epinephrine as we speak right now. In addition, it's triggering a, a dopamine increase, but not by triggering the release of dopamine directly. Caffeine increases the sensitivity of dopamine receptors. So whatever dopamine is floating around in your system and my system, the caffeine is amplifying that effect, not necessarily in, by making it a longer effect, by making the intensity a little bit higher. The other thing that um, caffeine does, and this is perhaps the most important one, is that it effectively prevents the action of a molecule called adenosine. Adenosine is a molecule that builds up the longer that you are awake. And then when you sleep, adenosine gets pushed back down to a minimal level. Adenosine essentially is a readout of fatigue overall. So if we were to stay up for two days, adenosine levels would be very high. So in terms of a practical tool, I do try and restrict my caffeine intake or at least most of it to the early part of the day. I'll stop drinking caffeine sometimes, usually around 3 or 4 p.m. I don't drink any high amount of caffeine after 4 p.m. and generally not coffee. But when you wake up in the morning, depending on how well and how long you slept, your levels of adenosine might be zeroed out and you feel really alert, or you might have a, a small amount of adenosine hanging around. If you drink caffeine right away, what happens is caffeine acts as what's called a competitive, uh, it, it, well, let, let's just keep it simple. It essentially binds to the receptor that, that adenosine would normally it's occupy. It's an antagonist. It, it's, it's a functionally, it's an antagonist, but it's what we call a competitive agonist because it binds, it binds, so it's an agonist, but it, it outcompetes the adenosine so the adenosine can't dock at those receptors. So that's great because you start to wake up, but then around 2 or 3 p.m., as that caffeine wears off, the adenosine that's still around binds to those receptors and you get the afternoon crash. So one way that you can avoid the, the afternoon crash, or at least uh, offset uh, quite a bit of it, is to wait 90 to 120 minutes after you wake up to ingest any caffeine. And so adenosine uh, lowers. Adenosine will continue to be cleared from your system in the early mm. part of the day. Why, why does someone experience caffeine withdrawals when they stop having coffee? Great question. Uh, two, uh, two main reasons. One is that caffeine, ha because of its effects on adenosine and because of adenosine's relationship to uh, the way that nerve cells connect to, vasc to the vasculature, to blood vessels and capillaries, that when they stop drinking caffeine, they actually get changes in blood flow and they get headaches. And so you're, you're either hyper perfusing the brain and, and head. And let, so there's, there's a compartment in which uh, below between the brain and skull sort of, I don't want to get too, too into details called the meninges. And it's very heavily vascularized. Your brain is very heavily vascularized. And it, it's sort of tricky for chronic caffeine users. The blood vessels are actually dilate when they, people drink caffeine because they're caffeine adapted for people that are not caffeine adapted and just have a cup of coffee and they never drink uh, caffeine, the blood vessels constrict. And that's because of the way that adenosine and these systems uh, tend to regulate themselves over time. So if you've been drinking a lot of caffeine and you stop, you can get pretty brutal caffeine headaches because of the changes in blood flow to your brain. And that takes a little bit of time. And generally, yeah, and, you, and generally tapering by mixing decaf with calf and then um, you know tapering off. 
Some people also find that they do much better drinking things like yerba mate tea. I'm a big fan of yerba mate. I don't have any relationship to mate company. I am Argentine, half my family, but, um, and just to mention, because you, you're, you're you and your listeners um, will know, some of them will know this, that there are some claims that yerba mate can cause mouth, mouth cancers and things of that sort. It, generally, you want to avoid the really smoky or toasted yerba mates. There's some pure leaf mates out there. There's some little organic farms that make them. I, I don't have any relationship to them, but there's one I found on Amazon. It's called Anna Park. I don't know who Anna is or where her park is, but or if she's even a person. But that's a very like clean, nice tasting mate, loose leaf mate. The, the ones that are really toasty or really um, smoked, they have a lot of preservatives. In Do you them. like the the flavor or is there something in it? Yes, a couple of reasons. One, that the caffeine is is um, a little bit lower level than in coffee. I love the flavor as long as it's not the toasted ones. I don't like smoky anything. I'm smoked anything. It's just kind of doesn't work for me. Um, the other reason is it has a, a lot of a compound called GLP-1 glucagon-like peptide one. Glucagon-like peptide one is very interesting. It's in, um, I think it's approved now, but it was in clinical trials for the treatment of obesity and diabetes. Suppresses appetite. Suppresses appetite in a major way and also leads to more lipolysis, especially under conditions of, of caloric deficit. So it's, it's a kind of a fat burner, if you will. Um, of course, caloric deficit is required for net fat loss, et cetera. Uh, I don't want to get the calories in, calories out mafia after me. Uh, that already happened. You know, <laughs> yeah, they, they gotta come, be careful. Yeah, they come after you with, um, with, uh, with nothing, but they come after you nonetheless. Um, it, and and they're right, right? Calories in, calories out is kind of the foundational principle of weight loss, maintenance, or gain. Mm-hmm. 